how I wanted to start was essentially when I was training to be a fitness instructor, um, mm. we were taught to ask clients a lot of questions, obviously, when they come for their first consultation. And yeah. one of the first questions you ask them is, why do you want to train? Yeah. And a lot of the time, um, especially with younger men, the answer is something like, uh, I want to get big. Uh, I want to look good. I want to look hot or aesthetic, bruh, or mm. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously based those reasons or that reason is obviously based exclusively on the sin of vanity. Yeah. And we don't condemn them for a long time. That was the sole reason I trained at all. And yeah. I don't think I'll ever fully be rid of it. Um, but if we acknowledge as Christian men that vanity is a sinful reason to train, then yeah. what is the Christian reason uh, to train? Thankfully, we have 2000 years of Orthodox Christian history and teaching um, yeah. at our disposal. And so looking at everyone from St. John Climacus to St. Nectarios of Agina in 1900, the consensus yeah. is pretty consistent and simple, and it seems to be um, balance, right? Um, yeah. So I liked a quote from St. John of Damascus. He said, man is a link of visible and invisible nature, right? So we're yes. a link of body and soul. We're not yes. just one or the other. And then, and so both of those things have to be trained um, in balance. So I was thinking about, well, what, you know, what would the consequences be of only pursuing spiritual fitness, of ignoring your physical fitness, right? Focusing exclusively on the soul and neglecting the body. Um, first, St. Nectarius pointed out, it can cause us to become sickly or weak. And yeah. um, how then would we have the strength to maintain our fasting regimen? Um, yeah. How are we to protect our families? How are we to, um, as it's Psalm 81 says, rescue the poor and needy and deliver them from the hand of the wicked, right? Um, yeah. Which I've seen some priests take as a literal call to defending others physically. Um, and we... We also understand that physical exercise improves our mental state and not exercising can easily make us despondent, you know, depressed. Yeah. Um, and I think most of us have likely experienced those negative mental effects of not getting enough exercise. Then the other side of it is now overemphasis on physical fitness and neglecting the soul. And St. Nectarios yeah. talked a lot more about this because as a proponent of physical exercise, he was always warning of the dangers of overemphasis on physical exercise. So um, he said that overemphasis on strength of the body, what he calls excessive exercise, um, is unbearable and unfitting, as well as insubordinate and insolent, and encourages yes. the soul towards disobedience. Yeah. Um, and because in this instance, the soul is not exercised in parallel, it has thus become ill which is why such excessive exercise and athletics of the body provides the audacity for it to rebel against the spirit and seek mm. to subdue it and place it under its rule. Mm. So basically then the very orthodox concept of balance, we see we need to train spiritual fitness and physical fitness. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the purpose of exercise, um, St. Nectaria summed up quite nicely. He said, uh, Wherefore, by fitness, achievable athletic vigor is not sought, nor indomitable and, un and untamable muscle strength, but the strengthening of physical power towards the ready satisfaction of the demands of the spirit and the fulfillment of its prescribed tasks. For the intended purpose of exercise is not to promote athleticism of the sportsman, but men perfectly formed capable of all endeavors, which is why exercise makes one most ready for the games and industrious through appropriate pains. Thus, the middle path of exercise is to preserve prudence, 
namely the harmonious growth of the powers of the soul and body, as well as sovereignty over the body, in order to be ready to fulfill the journeys. Um, so one thing there, he does say sovereignty over the body, right? Um, which means that while soul and body have to be trained in parallel, we have to devote more time to the spiritual fitness because yeah. it is so much harder to make gains um, in that area than it is on the physical side. Uh, it takes yeah. a, it takes a lot more dedication, and we want um, we want those two things to be balanced. So we need to um, yeah make sure that we're putting in a lot of effort because otherwise, if we don't have sovereignty over the body, then like you said earlier, then body becomes master of the soul, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, which can lead to devastating consequences. So something else that I picked out of that whole rundown of the purpose of exercise, and it comes back to, you know, all these young guys just wanting to train to look good, um, yeah. to be to be aesthetic, to be massive, bruh. Um, is he he uses the term men perfectly formed, right? Yeah. Um, to promote um, to to promote men perfectly formed, capable of all endeavors, yeah. and so now that means there is such a thing as a perfectly formed man, right? Because we have yeah. this idea of what the perfect man looks like. A lot of guys point to um, Hellenistic statues of mighty yeah. gods yeah. and all of that, you know, and saying that's mm -hmm. that's a perfectly formed man. But I suppose Saint Nectarios means how God intended for us to be formed. Yeah. Right. Because God's intentions are perfect. Um, so then the question becomes, how do we find out how we intended for us to be formed? Yeah. And how do we find our actual uh, godly physique? You know, what, what I suppose I like to call our ascetic aesthetic. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. I would say we find it by uh, we we find out how we're meant to be formed by following the teachings of Christ and his one church and by exercising yeah. consistently and moderately and eating healthily and moderately and um and keeping that physical training in balance with our spiritual training is obviously yeah. the other side of that and then out of that our ascetic aesthetic will emerge and it's obviously going to look different for all of us um yes because we're all different that's the difference between trying to find trying to find um your perfect form, how God intended for you to be formed over choosing a statue of Zeus as the yeah. goal is that 99% of guys are not even genetically capable of looking like that, yeah. you yeah. know, whereas pursuing how God intended for you to be formed is available to everyone. Um, yeah. You know, so like some, some men obviously are naturally giants and, yeah. and that will come with its own increased challenge of subduing the body uh, yeah. and, and mastering the body. And other men will be smaller and lean. And that also comes with its own challenges, like not allowing envy to creep yeah. into the heart. Yeah. Um, I should also say those bigger guys or naturally shredded guys also have the added challenge of trying not to be a stumbling block for their brothers. The challenge of being humble and modest and not taking their shirts off for camera. Um, yeah. Obviously, modesty needs a whole uh, discussion of its own. But then, so coming back to what St. Nectario says, he, we now have a rudimentary understanding that we need balance and that we need to pursue that godly physique. Um, but now he also warned against excessive exercise. So what is excessive exercise? How much exercise is too much? And again, just like what our physique, our perfect form looks like, again, that's, um, that's relative. It's going to be different yeah. for, for everyone um, because the level of spiritual fitness uh, is going to be different for everyone. Like, yeah. as, as a layman, I don't pursue spiritual fitness to anywhere near the same level that a monk does, right? Yeah. And a monk gets all of his necessary physical exercise from physical labor, you know? Yeah. We don't... Um, maybe someone can correct me, but I've never seen a video from Mount Athos of a monk deadlifting, you know, 500 pounds. Yeah. Um, they're out there farming and all of that. 
And so I was wondering, how do you think, how do you think we find that relative to us? Because that's it. We can say, okay, be warned of excessive exercise. We need to make sure um, it's in balance and parallel with our spiritual pursuits. But I'm wondering how practically we find how much is too much, you know, like obviously. Yeah. Okay, well, I think you used a good analogy when you said most guys will pull this uh, standard of uh, a statue of Zeus or Adonis or Apollo um, and, and say, that is what I want to look like. That is uh, how fit I want to be. It's a good analogy because those statues were idols. Um, and to find who you are in your uniqueness and how God has made you, um, and to find your fitness standard, both spiritually and physically, is something that you can look at your priest, you can look at a monk, you can look at an ancient father, and you can receive from that the things that you can can hold on to and apply in your own life. But you're not going to be a carbon copy of your priest or of some um, ancient father. You will let what they give you influence you and you will try your best to apply it. And then you will slowly but surely begin to figure out who you are, who God has made you to be. So trying to answer your question in terms of things being too much is the first thing that needs to happen is the person has to divorce himself or the man has to divorce himself from those idols. Uh, and, and this is also what we do when we become a Christian. We reject the world and we accept Jesus Christ. We accept the church. We accept the church's teachings. We get baptized into God's family, into the kingdom of God, and we reject worldly standards. So one of the biggest challenges that I think somebody will face, especially for the first couple of years of becoming a Christian, is to divorce themselves from those worldly standards. Um, now, this even goes for people who don't want to be a Christian, but they might just be watching your videos, is to reject these standards that are being imposed upon us since antiquity. Because since the time of, of, of the Greek Olympics 2,000 years ago, those images slowly but surely started bearing down upon the human race. And now we sit in the information age with Instagram and TikTok and everything, where every single guy is just constantly shirtless, posting all of these standards that are idols. They are literally demonic idols. And we've got to reject that. And then once you accept the rejection of that, and if you pursue God, you pursue going to church, you pursue confession, you pursue speaking to your priest and to your Christian friends, and, 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 and you start training and you get advice, who you are will begin emerging. And you will see, okay, this is my level of fitness. I am not wanting to be a bodybuilder. I am not wanting to be an Olympic medalist. I am not a Marine, you know, going to fight in the war. I am an accountant uh, working a day day to day job. I'm engaged. I'm this. These are the hours I have in my day and I want to be fit and up. And then you can start exploring those standards of how much fitness you need for one for one person depending on how old they are depending on where they are in their lives for one person it might involve walking to work every day for another person it might be far more stringent than that uh, based on their genetics based on their lifestyle based on their confession to their priest uh, based on what they're learning from the bible and from the fathers um, so it'll be unique like that. But to answer your question, just again, to make the point clear, step number one in figuring out what is too much exercise is rejecting these worldly standards, like outright rejecting them. Speak to your priest, uh, speak to your orthodox uh, friends, your godfather. Uh, don't listen to supplement adverts. Don't go to Instagram 
don't get your standards from anything other than proper Orthodox channels and primarily, obviously, your priest. Yeah, nice, nice. And um, yeah, and obviously, my first suggestion for anyone who might be watching who isn't Orthodox, like naturally, my first suggestion is going to be find your nearest Orthodox church, you know. Um, yeah, um, look, um, obviously, you'll have the distinction between people who are Orthodox and people who are not. But even the people who are not Orthodox will do well to just reject the standards that mm. are being imposed upon them. Because regardless of whether you're Christian or not, why should, uh, uh, let's say, for instance, an Instagram um, poster, some, some influencer who's heavy and he's all built up and he's all steroided up and he's got his shirt off all the time, he's not as tall as you. He's not in the same income bracket as you. He's not living in the same country as you. He doesn't have your genetics. He doesn't have your financial capacity. He's probably richer than you. You know, let's face it, depending on who they are, where they're from. And now you are just blindly accepting his standard. He'll he'll set a gym plan in place and say so many reps of this, so many visits to the gym, these supplements that you might even be allergic to some of the supplements that he, he suggests, you know, depending on, on the situation. So the point is you are a uniquely made in, in human being. And there's no point in just accepting these cookie cut these cookie cutter standards based on, like we said, like on some idol idolatry, some uh, some uh, uh, idolatrous standard, some single standard that every single man has to subject himself to, and everyone has to look like that. Everyone has to be as ripped as that. Everyone has to be as fit as that. And if you're not, you're a total reject. So even non Christians. If they want to um, benefit themselves, they will rid themselves from these absurd standards. Fair enough. Yeah, and it's um, honestly, it's you know, it's great that you say that as step number one because obviously, in the ladder of divine ascent, the very first step before anything else, before tackling your gluttony, um, your lust, anything else, it's the first step is renouncing the world. Yes. Um, that can take so many forms for, for like a, a hermit, for a full blown ascetic, it's going to be living out in a cave in the mountains. Um, yeah. and obviously for a city dweller who can still be orthodox, there's no, you know, the, um, it's a good starting point is rejecting those, those standards yeah, yeah, and then yeah. standards in so many other aspects of life as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Okay, so that's to that's to now just begin to address the topic of what is what is too much exercise. Mm. Well, that should be your guide. Is the the second you start exercising, making any kind of effort to reach for a standard that is not God's standard, that mm. is too much. Mm. Yeah, and that's interesting because I wonder how that applies to. You know, for example, it's one thing to train just to try and reach a standard of a physique. But let's say, for example, now um, I'm a rock climber. I want to train to be better at rock climbing, you know, because now um, St. Nectarius was also um, in favor of sports. Yeah. He did um, uh, institute uh, soccer for his students at their request mm. and played with them sometimes, you know. Um, so I wonder now training for for sports where that line is drawn, you know, because now if I'm going to try and get better at a sport, that's going to now require an extra level of, um, yeah. dedication. Yeah. And, um, so if I can chip in there, mm. I think the first thing one must do, uh, whether you train for a sport or not. So if you're somebody that just, let's say you're somebody that just feels that you must do more physical exercise, versus somebody who's already a regular gym attendant versus somebody who wants to do a sport. <clears throat> so those are three, three levels. Any of those people, <clears throat> sorry, must ask, ask themselves, why am I doing this? So typically the person on the bottom tier will probably have his doctor telling him, look, you better start exercising. So he's got a very good reason to exercise. The person who's already a regular 
gym, gym person, a regular exerciser, he will have to ask himself, am I becoming vain? Am I becoming prideful? Am I becoming lustful? Which in his case would mean maybe he shouldn't exercise so much. Maybe he should devote himself more to prayer or do some charity work or, or whatever the case might be. Or he might have a good reason. Maybe he's not training too much. He, he just wants to set a slightly higher standard and he's gifted genetically or whatever. So it depends. But the point is he has to ask himself the question and, and, and he has to be honest with himself. Why am I doing this? But now when you get to the person who wants to pursue a sport, even there, the same thing comes into place. I mean, if you are a national or international sports star, it's your job. It's not just sport. It's not just exercise. It's also your work. It's your income, which means you better be training. You better be the top of your game. But if you're just doing sport with friends or if you're doing sport at school or whatever, and you're not necessarily super gifted, but you have that drive, well, you must ask yourself, am I doing this for lust? Am I doing this for recognition? Am I wanting all the girls at school to look at me and, and throw themselves at me? Do I want to take my short shirt off at every, every opportunity and, and make other people jealous? What's the reason? So answering that question will indicate to you whether you are, and, and that's obviously where speaking to a priest or if, if you're not orthodox, speaking to a mentor or, or, or whatever the case might be. But uh, regardless of who you speak to, the point is to be honest. Because if the answer is no, I'm actually being vain, I actually want to make other people jealous, I actually want to indulge in lust, well, there's your answer. Even for sport. <coughs> because you can, let me just now continue, you can do sport for sport, you can do sport as a job. And when you do sport just for sport, you can do it just for fitness and sport and spending time with your friends. When you do it uh, as a professional athlete, you're doing it as an income, as a job. But there are other reasons to do sport. They're doing sport to have everyone look at you and cheer you on. Uh, time to, you know, ca catch the glory and be the center of attention while you're already, uh, you're already stepping onto the slippery slope when you're doing that. Yeah, fair enough. That pretty much encapsulates it all. I mean, that's, um, yeah, that's the thing. Just like, um, just like how much exercise is too much is going to be individual, an individual thing. F figuring out how much is too much is also a very yeah. individual thing. And, and yeah, and an inward search. Look, I can, I can, to make this, to make this real, we can, spin it around and, and look at the opposite side. The same things count for somebody who's not exercising enough. And this also goes for spiritual fitness. So a person who's not exercising enough will get to a stage where the doctor will tell him, look, you better start exercising or you're going to have health. You're going to enter the world of health hazards. You're going to get very sick. And he will also be tempted not to exercise the, the the one who's exercising too much will be tempted by vanity and lust and things like that but the person who's not exercising enough will be tempted by laziness making excuses uh, you know all, all the, those are also sins so it spins both ways Th this is why um, Saint Nectarius using the term balance is so important. People, th people, when people listen listen to us talk about this topic, they might feel, oh well, you know, we're always talking about being tempted by lust and all of that. But you're also tempted by laziness. Um, so it's the same thing. You must ask your, when you must when your doctor tells you to exercise and you're not wanting to exercise. You must ask yourself why. Why am I not wanting to exercise? Oh, because I'm lazy. Or, oh, I want, to, I want to be sick so that I can blame my wife for the fact that my life is a mess. <laughs> and I'm like, I have to lie on the couch because my wife is a terrible wife. You, you see what I mean? There's a reason why you're doing it. Mm. And it's very important to be honest about that. So we've addressed two topics now so far. The one was leaving the world behind, uh, rejecting worldly standards and all of that. And then the second thing uh, is this topic of confession. 
so when you're orthodox you can go to your priest if you're not orthodox you can at least try and be honest with yourself but uh, confession boils down to being honest with yourself and if you're really honest with yourself you will come to the conclusion and then you have to face the consequences of that i want to be a vain arrogant lustful guy who makes everybody jealous well then you're going to have to bear the consequences of that because there will be consequences that's for sure